Hey guys, welcome back to Cisco Biology. Today we are going to learn the toughest topic ever in Form 4 Biology, reproduction. Yeah, a lot of students told me that this topic is tough because you need to memorize the hormones, you need to memorize the sequence of the process, you need to memorize the graph, and then you need to put it all together, then only you can understand the whole topic. <laughs> That's why in this video, I'm going to put this, 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 and this into one single diagram so that you guys can see the whole picture of this topic. So without further ado, let's start the oh, oh, oh. Let's start the old genesis and menstrual cycle. All right, so the first thing we are going to do is to map out the female reproductive organ first. Okay, so all set. So let's label what I have drawn here. Let's start with the blood. So this is the blood. This is the ovary. This is the uterus. The endometrium wall is here. On the top, we have the hypothalamus. The pituitary gland. The left one is the anterior pituitary loop. And the right one, this one is the posterior pituitary loop. Together, we call this as a pituitary gland. Okay, so let's start with the old genesis first. All right, we are going to zoom in into this place, the ovary. To learn about the old genesis, we need to divide the whole process of old genesis into three time frame. So let's divide it into three sections. The, the first time frame will be the time when you are still inside your mother uterus, which is before birth. The second time frame is after birth. Then the last one is when you reach your puberty. All right, so let's start with the before birth first. Now the first cell is called the primordial germ cell. Let's draw a circle here. This primordial germ cell is a 2N cell, which means that it consists of 46 chromosomes. To increase the number of the cell in the ovary, this primordial germ cell is going to divide themselves by going through a process called mitosis. So once the primordial germ cell carry out the mitosis, it will form a cell which is still a 2N cell but this time we don't call it as a primordial germ cell anymore, we call it as an O-gonium. This O-gonium cell will remain as an O-gonium cell until you come out and see the world. So once you come out from your mother's uterus, this O-gonium cell will start to develop into a cell which is surrounded by follicular cell. So the follicular cell it looks like this. Label. This is the follicular cell. They are kind of thin before they develop into a more mature cell. Now, come back to the cell inside the follicular cell. What we call the cell inside the follicular cell, we call this as the primary oocyte. So this primary oocyte, eventually it will develop into an ovum. Okay, so once you already know what is the follicular cells and the primary oocyte already, we are going to draw the next cell. Still the 2N cell, but this time the follicular cell will grow a little bit thicker. Now, what happened to the follicular cell? This follicular cell it developed into the cell that we call it as the primary follicles. But how about the cell in the follicular cell? This cell is still is still being called the primary oocyte. But is there any changes? Yes. So before this, the first primary oocyte, it carried out the meiosis. And once the primary oocyte undergoes the meiosis, it forms the primary oocyte and stop at the prophase 1. So this primary oocyte will stop at prophase 1 to wait until the times when you reach puberty, which is the third stage of the oogenesis. When the female reach puberty, the primary follicles will start to develop into the secondary follicles. So let's zoom into this. Let's see what is happening here.
Okay, so now you look at the follicle cell. The follicle cell started to have different layers of follicle cell. And this follicle cell, we call it as the secondary follicle cell, which developed from the primary follicle cell. We call this as the secondary follicle cell. So who is the one who tell the primary follicles to develop into the secondary follicles? There must be something to send the signal to the primary follicles, right? Yes, so there is a hormone will be released into the ovary to tell the primary follicles to develop into the second follicle. And this hormone is called the FSH hormone. So the full name of the FSH hormone is follicle stimulating hormone. This follicle stimulating hormone will stimulate the follicles to grow into the secondary follicles. And where does this FSH come from? It comes from our brain. So let's go back to the hypothalamus here. Hypothalamus and the pituitary glands, they are part of our brain. So the cell in the hypothalamus, it will produce a hormone called the GnRH into the pituitary gland. GnRH. The full name of the GnRH is called the gonadotrophin releasing hormone. So basically, this hormone will stimulate the cell in the posterior lobe to produce two types of hormone, which is the FSH and the LH. We will talk about the LH later. So in this stage, the pituitary glands will produce a lot of follicle stimulating hormone into the bloodstream. And this FSH will be sent to the ovary to stimulate primary follicles into the secondary follicles. So this is how it works. So once the primary follicles, they grow into the secondary follicles, these secondary follicles will release another types of hormone, which is called the estrogen. And this estrogen will be released into the bloodstream. And since this is the first time that the follicles release the estrogen, so the estrogen level must be very, very low. Low level of estrogen. This low level of estrogen will have two functions. The first function is to encourage the repair of the endometrial wall after the menstruation. And another function of this estrogen is to inhibit the release of FSH and LH through a negative feedback. So the negative feedback will inhibit the production of FSH and the LH. So normally this happens during the day 0 to day 5. Why the estrogen want to reduce the production of FSH and LH? Because they want to prevent the growth of the new follicles. We don't want to have a new follicles to to grow now. Now, come back to here. Remember, previously the primary oocyte stops as prophase 1. Now these follicles want to continue the meiosis 1. So right here, we just write down continue meiosis 1. Since a cell, the parent cell, they will carry out the meiosis 1 to form 2 cell, am I right? And then this 2 cell will carry out the meiosis 2 to form another 4 daughter cell. So this is the whole process of meiosis. Now, same goes to the primary oocyte. After this primary oocyte, it, it carry out the meiosis one, it will form two daughter cells. So the first daughter cell is called the first polar cell. Normally this first polar cell got no functions. Huh? We want to focus on the oocyte. Now the oocyte, when it carry out the meiosis one, it will form the secondary oocyte which is a haploid cell. So write down secondary oocyte, which only has one set of chromosome. And at this stage, this secondary oocyte, it has completed the meiosis one. But how about the first polar cell here? This first polar cell will complete the meiosis two to form two polar body. But these polar bodies, eventually they will die. Okay, 